Hello, everyone, and welcome back to week two of the Elite Season 7 featuring Splatterhouse when Paku Graffiti. I'm Hans Buttface. Tonight, we will bring you four different sets of matches spanning five of the groups. The first race will feature Dig Shake versus Jam Evil in group Michael Myers and Uro and Jack Miss Wedge from group Killer Tomatoes. As we reset the standings, you can see that Uro has not played a race yet. Jack Miss Wedge lost his race to Zyrak last week. And over in group Michael Myers, Jam is 1-0. He defeated Puke 7 last week. And Dig Shake lost to Edgestream. He is 0-1. Let's take you to these races now with Coach Crab and Armageddon time. And welcome to our next race. This is Coach Crab 127 with my partner in crime, Armageddon, Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Tom. That's me, that's me, that's me. And uh, hello, Coach Crab. Welcome to the show. We're going to be doing a little bit of uh, Splatterhouse One Pack of Graffiti. Uh, we have two categories going on here. We got Michael Myers and Team Leprechaun. Um, we got Michael Myers in the top, uh, Leprechaun in the bottom, and we've already started the race, so here we go. Yes, it should be a pretty interesting race right here. We've got uh, Jackamus, who is 0-1 in the race so far. Uh, Uro, who, uh, this is his first race. We have uh, Jameer Evil, and his record is, or Jameer Evilier, his record is 1-0, and, and we have Digshake, whose record is 0-1 so far in the tournament. Yeah, interesting that uh, Europa Europsalis is actually, uh, this is his very first race, so he's green to the whole thing, and sure enough, speaking of green, we got some green monsters doing a little bit of a dance, making a little bit of love, possibly getting down tonight. I don't know, what do you think? It sure looks that way, and uh, as we get these uh, bucktooth zombies uh, running around back and forth, uh, who do you like in this race, Armageddon, or in both of these races? I like the uh, cameo by Little Dracula, the little-known um, uh, cartoon from the early 90s that my brother watched and I uh, very much detested. As for actual human beings, I don't know. Um, Big Shake's always had a very uh, large presence, you know, in the uh, SHI tournament, now known as the Elite Tournament. And I don't know. Um, the best I can say is that we just got to see how this plays out. Everybody usually uh, together in the beginning, and then we got to wait until things sparse out, you know? Right you are. And uh, Jackamus Wedge is actually my former um, teammate in the Olympics, as he uh, was a silver medalist in the uh, Zelda II randomizer during the, uh, um, the Olympics back uh, between seasons five and six. Well, I'm glad we have uh, Stats McGee on hand here because, you know, I, I'm not exactly a stats guy myself. You know, I don't, it, it, if I was put in charge of uh, stats, they'd probably throw the book at me. Speaking of which, we got <laughs> both. I don't know. I, I've heard of hitting the books, but this is just ridiculous. Oh, you're on a roll tonight. I mean, doesn't that scene kind of remind you of that library scene from Ghostbusters in the beginning? Yes, and that scene kind of makes my head spin round and round and round. Oh, got him! So, uh, who looks to be uh, in the lead at this point? It looks like uh, Uro got a pretty quick kill right there on the, uh, the Reagan boss for level 1. And, uh... He has moved on to level two, and everyone else trying to finish up on uh, the first, uh, the, the level one boss. And uh, Jam Jameer Eviler looks like he uh, got through. Digshake got through okay. Jackam is struggling a little bit, but it looks like he just got through. It seems like, uh, yeah, everybody's this. It seems the uh, the apex of where people start to uh, fan out is definitely the Reagan boss, because either you get the quick kill 
or you just sit there and hack away at everything until you either die or hopefully just accidentally fumble your way through. Yeah, it's pretty difficult timing, and uh, you really only have one shot to do it, so... Uh, do not if miss you, a chance if you, to blow. If, so if you miss it at first, it's uh, it's kind of difficult to make up that time. Man, look at the lead that uh, Uro already has. It, could, it cuts like a knife. Speaking of knives, we got in the top right-hand corner. Oh, and the uh, puns continue. Don't say though. We so got you're. We got... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna mention we got chicken bosses. We got sewage. I mean, I don't. I don't know. This uh, kind of reminds me of uh, what my normal Thanksgivings are like. But it, up here in Canada, it's actually nowhere near Thanksgiving. But you guys, I hear, are uh, gonna be bringing out the birds a little bit soon, aren't? Uh, yes. Uh, it's going to be a fun holiday. Uh... Are you uh, planning on d doing anything for the uh, United States uh, Thanksgiving? Would you possibly I be doing I actually am, but uh, that's not the topic at hand. The topic at hand is giant, disgusting green rats. And we have sewage strats in the bottom right and the top left. And I'm not sure if everybody's going to be going for the sewage strat, but uh, it's definitely a gamble. It sure looks like it. Um, I guess you could call it... Um, a bit of a safer strategy, but uh, you do lose a couple of seconds if you don't get if you if, compared to uh, getting the uh, the high rising strats perfectly timed. Well, you know me, I'm just a uh, a wimpy little plebe, so I will definitely take the low hanging fruit should that uh, occasion arise and take the easy way out. But some of these people are just complete rogues. Yeah, Jackamus is doing the high rising strat right now. Let's see how he's able to fare. Yeah, unfortunately, you get dinged once, you're all the way back at the beginning. It's kind of like playing sorry, but, you know, by yourself. Oh, oh. sorry! Bum, 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 Jackamus. An unfortunate death right there for Jackamus, and the really unfortunate thing about that is you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the sewer. You don't get to start just at that boss, so lots of time loss right there. And in the meantime, I noticed that uh, Uro and uh, Jem Eveler both did not pick up the shotgun. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah, that, that's a strategy all its own. When to pick up the shotgun, when not to pick up the shotgun. Everybody's got their own cute, adorable little strategies. Sometimes, though... There's, there's, there, there's no shame in just going in with a hack and slashy knife, but going in balls deep. Unfortunately, Dick Shake taking it, uh, taking a death here with the spider ball. Yeah, he's gonna have to start that over. Let's uh, see. Uh, he's, he's gonna have definitely, definitely gonna be an uphill battle for Dick Shake and Jackamus Wedge at this point. Uh, well, but we'll see what happens as the race goes on. Anything could happen. The upper race, though, seems pretty close, as they're both on the very same boss. And uh, Jackamus in the, is finally making his way to the streets. The mean streets of, uh, well, wherever the heck this is. I'm not really sure where this is taking place. Does this look like your hometown, Coach? It's downtown Brooklyn. Oh, they've really done uh, a number with the place. Look at all the, the, the shrubberies and the the, the the greeneries. Oh, it's quite beautiful, yes. But uh, it looks like uh, Jim Eveler is uh, through uh, before Dig Shake, so he's got a little bit of a lead right there. And uh, Uro now at the, uh, the, the flying... the flying bats and the uh, goat boss. Um, Greatest uh, of all time. Uh, wh what is your favorite uh, type of uh, animal that you see at the zoo? All right, uh, I'd have to say, you know, probably the birds. And you probably think, what, really? But they seem to be the most animated. They'll actually interact with you. Like if you move around, they'll move around with you. Some of them can talk. Some of them have silly hair. And they're not going to throw their poo at you. 
Speaking of the, the birds, that's actually a really good horror movie. Do you agree? Never seen it. I'll wait for the uh, I'll wait for the remake. Ah, uh, yes, the remake. Uh, there hasn't been one for uh, 50 something years on that one. I mean, that movie came out in the 60s, I believe, unless there has been a remake that I don't know about. I mean, I've seen Birdemic and Birdemic 2. It's pretty much the same thing as far as I'm concerned, right? Uh, probably, but I've, I've, I haven't seen those movies, so I wouldn't know exactly, but uh, it looks like we've got a little bit of the fly action going on with Uro getting ready to shoot that fly in the face with the shotgun. That's got to be the most inefficient way to kill a fly, don't you agree? Well, it's certainly uh, the most efficient way in creating a horrible, crazy mutant uh, hybrid, but at the same time, uh, it's also, isn't that how Baxter Stockman was created? Oh, I'm not familiar with his origins, so I wouldn't know. Can you tell us the story? No, nah, not really. I'm not in the mood. Because oh, uh, oh. We're, ar we're already, um, we, we got some Diamond Lake, you know, not to be confused with um, Sapphire Lake from that other movie. And we've got legs hanging up out of the, uh, the, the water as well. The uh, solo um, synchronized swimmer. Yeah, after a while, though, they're really going to start uh, feeling the weight in their lungs. <laughs> right you are. And, man, we still got to have spiders on screen in the bottom left. People know how much I hate spiders. Ugh. If this was my cat, there would be some uh, exclamation point spiders right now. Unfortunately, it's not. So that's no matter, though. Just get rid of those things. It's actually kind of cathartic now that I think about it. I gotta get rid of, uh, gotta get away from those uh, eight-legged freaks, right? That's a movie I've never seen and never planned to see. Also, I saw, David Arquette. I saw like half of it when it was uh, on like TV one time. It was on TBS or something like that, and I turned it off halfway through. And I probably should have turned it off like after the first ten minutes. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Um, I, I always like the Hitchcock movies. And uh, Psycho has always been one of my favorites. And uh, The Birds, like I mentioned earlier, is a really good one. Uh, what about you? The Shining, easily, easy. That's just that's just the, the easy money right there. Just the, the the way that it's shot just gives you that eerie, creepy feeling. It doesn't rely solely on jump scares. There's a few. There's like a couple, really, but just the just the the eerie kind of crawl skin crawling feeling. Of the whole thing really gets me yeah the shining is great but it's actually a movie that i've never seen all the way through in one sitting i'm pretty sure i've seen the whole thing uh over you know multiple views of many years maybe out of order but uh never exactly never exactly sat down and watched the entire thing well, you know what you can get forked which is exactly what big shake may be doing if he doesn't pull his stuff together here at this boss yeah, he better watch out, or uh, we just might have to stick a fork in him and he'll be done. Come on, Coach, that wasn't even good. Come on, you, you, oh. gotta, you gotta jump on the armor train, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks for completely no-selling that one, Armageddon. <laughs> okay, so we got Jackamus now completing the uh, goat boss and moving on to level four. Jam Eagler taking a dip in uh, amongst the wooded area of Sleepaway Camp. And uh, the ghoul room is, uh, is the room that I call it. Lots of people call it the scream room. It, it's one that can uh, give lots of people the uh, uh, the heebie-jeebies and kind of, uh, kind of kind of be a difficult spot right there because once you kill those things, they just kind of fly all over the place. Yeah, the screamers, they really give me the jibblies because... Once you slice them, it's like their soul comes out of them and tries to haunt you. And it's not so much scary as it is just plain annoying. Well, screamers aren't always a bad thing. I mean, it just depends on the context, you know? Sounds like my Saturday night. I, I would not doubt that in the least. Speaking of my Saturday night, Jackamus, now at the uh, Jeff Goldblum room, 
I, I don't see I don't see the connection, but uh, uh, sure, I will uh, I'll play along. You know what? Sometimes uh, sometimes Armageddon in time doesn't really even know what he's talking about, so you have to tell him to shut up a couple times. Oh no! But unfortunately, falling through the uh, well, the bridge. that's already happened. That's already happened in chat about ten times so far. So D don't worry about that. We've already taken care of that. What, falling through the bridge, Uro Uropsalis? That and uh, people telling you to shut up. I guess he's just trying to uh, make his best Red Hot Chili Pepper song impression. Does he do that? He was under the bridge. Oh yes, lovely. And what's under a lot of bridges? Water. Which is exactly where Jackalus Wedge is right now. And he grabbed the shotgun. Interesting. It is fun to use. I'll, I'll give it that. It, it is, but the, the kickback is uh, kind of irritating at the same time. But we've got Uro now heading into the uh, final level. And uh, Jam Eviler uh, doing the same thing. Everybody Dig making still... their way to Hell House. Dig Shake still on level 6. And uh, Jackamus Wedge trying to hang in there back at level four. Don't count people out until the race is done because you never know. At any time, anybody could be the winner. Any given Sunday, right? I'm sorry, I don't really follow those moves. Me neither, that's okay. But, uh,. Uro gets through the uh, chainsaws pretty clean. Heading on to the uh, the fly room again. Here's an interesting movie. What is your f uh, interesting movie? Interesting question. What is your favorite football movie? Probably remember the Titans. Uh, I've always enjoyed that one. Came out when I was in high school, and I had a lot of uh, friends on the football team who really enjoyed that movie as well. I wasn't on the football team, but I had some friends on the football team. Hmm, interesting. I'd have to say mine is either uh, The Water Boy or Necessary Roughness. I really like the comedies. I've never seen Necessary Roughness. Is it a good one? Yeah, yeah it's got some jokes. It's got some yucks, people yucking it up. Very nice. And uh, once again, going through the Screamer Room, Uro is uh, just about at the final boss at the moment. As Speaking is of football, jam. he's taken he's taken the hail mary by not grabbing a pop. Yep, going all out, no question about that. And just uh, 16 slices away from victory. Meanwhile, we got Dick Shake in the clock room and uh, Jam Eviler also on Punk Pumpkin Boss, and uh, Jackamus still at Sleepaway Camp. He just can't escape it. Dig Shake doing some amazing uh, hovering over the holes right there. It looks like he was like on the very last pixel possible in order to not fall into those holes. What amazing speedrun strategies he is using right now. That's the showing off strategy and that look what I can do. But sometimes it can pay off. I mean, you know, that 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 is how you get the chicks, right? I think it's frowned upon a little bit in the uh, elite community, but... Uh... Uh, I don't know. We can let chat decide for themselves. Oh, I'm not saying it's favorite. I'm just saying it's effective. It could be. It could be. But we've got uh, three players on the final boss at the moment right now. I believe that Uro is the furthest into this boss fight. Dig Shake just starting it. And uh, yeah, we, we've got uh, three quarters of a Pink Floyd laser light show right now. It's actually very impressive. It feels good on my eyes. I like that. Oh, Jackamus West uh, Wedge t uses his last continue. So we're gonna have to. Uh, hopefully, he won't have to use a uh, a password. We'll see what happens though. He's got to make something happen here. Maybe uh, maybe be a little more cautious. You know, if he wants to see the day out, as it were. Because as you know, uh, DNFs do hurt a little bit more than just your traditional loss. And it just feels good to actually complete the game, too. Uh, you've got to play for pride at this point, you know? 
Yeah, because I mean, without pride, you're nothing. But, as we can see, if you shield your eyes and look in the bottom right, we have ourselves our first winner and second winner in top left. So, kitty corner winners. Uro, at the time of 1846, wins his race. And we have Jam Eviler, with the time of 1855, is the winner for his race against Dig Shake. So, pretty good race. Uh, pretty good races for those guys. Uh, not bad times at all. We'll see how Dig Shake and uh, Jackamus end up. Jackamus trying to get through the, uh, the werewolf boss, and it looks like he does. Yeah, you, you can lose focus very quickly at the werewolf boss. Uh, things can de-escalate very quickly with him. Or escalate quickly. Uh, d depending on how you look at it, yes. I like to see the glasses half full, unlike some people. Or you could be like an engineer and just say the glass is too big. Oh, you're blowing my mind while we're watching this race? Oh, I can't handle it. And Dig Shake is done. So, Dig Shake, uh, with a time of 1956, he'll take an L, but uh, I'm sure he's still proud of himself for finishing with a, uh, a pretty decent time, sub-20. Can't go, uh, uh, can't be too upset with that. Yeah, definitely room for improvement, but at the same time, um, you know, you, you, can, you can look back at the tape, watch the tapes, and uh, learn, learn a little bit, pick up on some stuff. Let's see how Jackamus finishes up right here. He is heading into the final level right now, and uh, he is on his last uh, continue, like we said. So uh, if he knows the uh, stage seven password, he'll be able to uh, just put that in if he has a uh, if he has game over right here. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see what he decides to do if he does end up uh, taking that final death. I think uh, isn't the last one. Uh basically half of Jenny's number, 867, and then 1. Uh, yes, I believe you're right. 867, but not 5. 8671. Yeah, I'm not sure how I remembered that. Probably just the uh, mnemonic of Jenny. Handling the uh, chainsaws pretty well at the moment. Hey, that's well, not what a mnemonic is. Arma, what are you talking about? Uh, I just kind of let that one slide. Well, he's doing a good job of dodging the chainsaws, but let's see if the, he realizes that he needs to uh, hit them. To, there we go. I think. All right, so hitting. I think it's once again just showing off strats, which is uh, pretty impressive. Absolutely, heading through yep. the uh, flies now. Nothing wrong with a little. Look what I can do. Yeah, we established earlier that uh, it, it's, it probably helps him with the ladies. Now, I was actually in a hospital today, and can you believe it that there weren't any clocks on any walls? Sorry, just seeing the clocks on the walls uh, reminded me of my peril that I faced earlier today. Not one clock I could touch. Hmm. That is, it. normally they do that in casinos to uh, prevent you from knowing what time it is. And oh, there is the uh, final game over. And we have a DNF for Jackamus Wedge. So he either he didn't know the password or he just gave up. Uh, so uh, that con so that concludes our race. Well, this, hard, uh, hard luck, hard luck. But you know what? Plenty of room for improvement. Clearly he has the skills to pay the bills. You just got to pay them on time. Well, it's unfortunate there for Jackamus, but we do get a, a good win for uh, Uro and uh, Jam Eviler. So anything else to say uh, before we uh, head on to the next race, Armageddon time? Well, uh, yeah, before I take it up, up to Hans, butt face, I just got to say, that's all the marbles. Excellent. Hans, we will go back to you. With that win, Uro moves to 1-0, joining Zyrak. They will race each other next week, with the winner more than likely making the bracket round. 
the unplayed races in this group may affect the standings. Stay tuned to see when those are made up. Over in group Michael Myers, Jam Evil punches his ticket to the bracket round, defeating Dig Shake. Edgestream and Puke 7 have yet to play this week, and both of them have a chance to join Jam in the bracket round. Let's keep things in the bowl. We're going to go on over to the group Leatherface race. And here's how everything looks in group Leatherface. Angry Larry is 1-0. He is going to take on 1-0 Armageddon time. And 0-1 Random Effect is going to take on 0-1 Zarnax 42. And that will be voiced by Bent Glass Tube and Link Sevens. Hello, I am Bent Glass Tube, and I'm joined by Link underscore 7777. Hey, what's going on, BGT? Not too much. We've got yet another couple races of this uh, splatter house here to watch. This is Group Ugly Head. I'm not sure what that guy is supposed to be. Is that Leatherface, maybe? Uh, it, it does not ring a bell. Yeah, we'll, we'll say it's him, because I, I don't know. Uh, I guess not. this is the middle tier of the races. So hopefully we see some middle tier quality runs here. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. It's a, it's a fun game, so either way it should be a good time. Yeah, overall this game is like pretty straightforward to play and learn. There's not really a whole lot to it, but uh, I think the charm of it comes from the kind of goofiness of the horror theme and everything. Yeah, and just the cartoony feel. I, I, I kind of like it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right, right from the start we got this, you know... Uh, Michael Jackson impersonator we can rate everyone's dances. I don't know what happened with Zarnax. I wasn't watching, but he's a little behind everyone else. So who do you think did the best dance, Link? Uh, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't really know that I have a vote on this, this uh, round. It was all all pretty even for me. Yeah, I think I'll give I'll give my vote to Arma because he doesn't win too many things, so we'll we'll let him win this one. Can I win the shade good, all at once? Good enough reason. So yeah, I know you, uh, you're you involved a lot with making tasks of games. Is there a task for this game? I never actually looked to see if there was. Uh, I haven't looked recently, but I'm certain there is, yeah. I know last season there wasn't. You were you were the one that created it for it. Yeah, last, the last season there was not already a task, and I, I actually spent probably significantly more time tassing the game than I did running it. Um, but this one, I believe, already has one. Yeah, I think this one's probably a lot less interesting to task to, just because the mechanics are so simple. Yeah, right and I, I don't think the there are I don't think there are very, very many notes. That's one thing I like to check is like, hey, what do the task notes say? What are some of the tricks? You know, how can how can some of that be incorporated into the run? But in in this case, I think it, it seemed like maybe the the person that made the task was like, you know, English was not their first language, and they uh -huh. just you know went oh. A little, uh, a little light on the notes, and so you're like, well, okay, I guess if I really wanted to dig in, I would just have to open it up and, and watch it and see what happens. Yeah, definitely. I guess we want to talk about this race a little bit. We saw Angry Larry and Arma had a pretty good fight against the uh, Exorcist boss. Uh, the top two players went a little slower there, but uh, both races are pretty close at this point. 
Yeah, that, that, uh, the, the, the doll head thing, I really struggled with that fight. I have a hard time. Yeah, for me, it's like 20% of the time it goes great and I can keep her in the corner, and then the other 80% of the time she just refuses to stay down there. Alright, sewer, sewer time we get an Angry Larry in the lead down there. Yeah, this level's kind of right gross. Like, especially on, on Larry's side, that water is a really kind of disgusting brown color. Yeah, you know, I, it's it's funny, different uh, people's setups and, and the different, uh, just, just slightly different colors and stuff that come out of, of different captures and, and that stuff. And to be totally honest, they're all really gross, so. <laughs> that's fair. Now, this is probably one of my least favorite bosses as far as uh, like how the fight goes mostly because i'm bad at doing it the the way you're intended to do it which uh, is not what larry's doing but it looks like zarnax is going to do it the right way and random effect i mean not not the right way necessarily the uh the way we assume is was intended to be done yeah i mean it, you gotta think that the bottom route was known probably by by the developers, but uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit easier, and I screw it up like most of the time. So. Yeah, the first couple times I tried it, I was like, "This is useless. Like, this is, this has not saved me anything." Because if you get hit, you know, you have to go back and do it the top then route. You're like right back there. So Gangry Larry forgot yeah. forgot what room was next, but yeah, it takes the, takes the drop. I do. This is the one that I, I at this point I I remember the other one to to jump right away, but that one I, I struggle with. Yeah, I forget about both of those rooms. Like I just always want to be holding right and never never do the different things you're supposed to do. Sarnax was playing it a little bit dangerous even there. He had the shotgun, and if you fire the shotgun, then you start falling off the platforms in there. Yeah, I'm kind of torn about that, because it's easy enough to do that, the, the chainsaws without the shotgun. But, um, you know, it's 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 quicker if you have it, I guess, just but only barely. And the risk the risk there is falling off those platforms. Looks like we don't have anyone opting for pacifist straps versus the uh, spiders here. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where you might as well take the experience. Just... Uh, you know, uh, what what movie this actually reminds me of, though? I'm thinking I don't. Spaceballs. Spaceballs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot that there was the, the alien scene in Spaceballs. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. <laughs> this bottom race is like neck and neck. Yeah. They're right in there. You know, a couple of these screens, I feel like I probably bleed a lot of time without even realizing it because you can, you know, take some hits and pick up some extra candy and then how much time do you really just throw away? It's... Yeah, especially on that, uh, the segment that uh, Larry and Arma are on, like, I always overstock on candy because you can get, a, you get like two or three candies on the way to the boss when you enter the church. This yeah. this boss is the one that I probably have the most difficulty killing. Uh, oh, see, I think this is bat. one of the easiest for me. Just get hit too much by these bats, I don't know. Yeah, if you can kill some of the bats as they spawn, that helps. But... Yeah, we got all four fighting the same boss right now. It's kind of kind of exciting. It was interesting to see Larry take the shotgun on the street stage, which makes it a lot easier to kill the things, but, uh, you know, it costs you a little bit of time because of the knockback. But overall, it doesn't look like he lost too much time. Yeah, I think they, they both did well in that fight, too. I think, uh, 
I, my strategy looks a lot like what Arma did there. Yeah, I might have to change my strategy up. I do this, like, jump slash thing that I think uh, causes me to take some... There's, interestingly, both both bottom racers finished at about the same time with about the same health, and both top racers finished with about the same time in health. Yeah, these, these races, and they're not even that far apart from each other, but yeah, race for race, they're both really close. This boss was super annoying before uh, before I learned about the uh, way to get the shotgun. <laughs> you don't have the shotgun. Strat, Jeff yeah. Goldblum can be a real jerk there. Old Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, you know, from the fly. That was actually a good movie. I like that movie. I have never actually seen that one. Maybe I'll have to check it out. This looks like Random Effect had a little bit of a little bit of trouble with the fly boss. The screen that uh Larry and armor on is one of the, one that's kind of annoying because you gotta pause a little bit for those skeletons to jump out of the water. Yeah, I didn't really find a good way to do that at that full speed. Yeah, I always end up like taking a hit or two, and then uh, you know that just say the way that the hits work in this game is really kind of obnoxious. Oh, and this is the best boss in the game right here. Like, is this one supposed to be based on some horror movie that is, you know, common in Japan, but we've never heard of? Because it's so I, different from any of the other bosses. I don't really know what's going on. I, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not really sure if there's, like, a reference here or if they were just making things up. But then, I mean, there's a lot of themed stuff, so you'd think it should be from something, but... Yeah, this bottom race remains just incredibly close. I didn't see what happened to the random effect that he fell a little behind. Did he take a death versus his boss or something, or is he just missing a lot of I his didn't, I didn't really see why. I think it might have been in the stage, because... He was, like, walking in, and Zarnax was finishing. I'm not really sure what happened there. Looks like they both had good screen, scream rooms on the bottom. Yeah, that room can be very frustrating. And actually, the the uh, the room with the, the spike walls just before the scream room, or two before the scream room, maybe, I always have a lot of problems with. Those are just really tight jumps if you don't want to wait for the spikes to go down. Oh, the yeah, one that ran I think I just right ended now. up waiting. Just not, like, for a long time, but just, you know. Yeah, that's probably the better way to jump do it. A little less to take time. three hits trying to jump over it. Angry Larry takes the bucket for defense. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot of... A lot of bucket defense here. Arma ops not to, not to do it though. We'll see. See if that pays off. I did a practice run earlier without it, and I, you know, I, so I was like, oh, I walked in here with a lot of health, and it worked out okay, but I lost a lot of health. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Arma's got the uh, got the werewolf down. So no, yeah, no, no struggle for no bucket yeah. for him. But Larry pulled ahead a little bit. Zarnax is in trouble here. I wonder if he'll take him. Oh no, there's the there's the health refill. Yeah, there's the burger. Right, that's the one thing. Even if you get really just hammered, 
you know, I'm, I'm a werewolf, there's a, a burger right at the beginning, so you're... And then there's, there's another one in the middle, too, so... You get yeah, this good stage is pretty generous there. with the health power-ups. You have, uh, s soda predictions? Who's taking the soda? I think, um... I don't the way that these these uh, guys are running it so far, I don't think either of them on the bottom will need the soda. I almost oh, always end up taking nobody. it, but at the moment RE's a little low on health, but you know, there's still quite a bit before we get to the to the last bit, so he could uh gain some health or lose some health. Yeah. This uh this robed guy, you know, booting you into the thing. I feel like that's one of the more kind of creepy scenes. <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> takes a turn from this uh, humorous, like, you know, comic or horror parody stuff to actual just creepy stuff. Yeah, like. I mean, it's also, like, and there's an amount of intrigue there, because you're like, okay, he stuffed you into a something, and then yeah, looks now like you wake up in a pump. coffin, and what what happened in between? Yeah, it's a, it's a, little, it's a little weird. Oh, Zarnax takes a, a bop. Yeah, time pieces. Yeah, yeah, this room can be very frustrating. Hey, you know, I think if you're really trying to do it fast, that's that's when you can get into some trouble. Yeah, usually if I, you know, when I try and push it, that's when I... When I uh, end up falling in the hole three times, and you know, <laughs> I'm just wasting time then. Larry forgoes the soda. He's got quite a bit of health. I think he'll be fine here. Yeah, it's pretty good. Arnex, I think, might want to grab the soda here. I didn't see if Arma took it. Ooh, so Zarnax is just gonna pa to... pass by the door. Yeah. He might be okay. Looks like uh, Larry's about one hit ahead here. Yeah, this is a a pretty straightforward last boss. I'm sure, sure we've heard enough how it works, so we won't talk about it too much. Yeah, I, I think everybody probably their their first time just got got demolished, and then once you kind of figure out where to stand, you can kind of see ahead where it's going, then you're in good shape, and then you walk in with five health, five health, and say, "Yeah, I don't need this. So we're good. We're gonna try to win this race." Yeah, I think if I had only five health, I'd still take the soda, but I, I honestly, I've only, I've only probably done six or seven runs of this game. Ooh, random effect takes a game over. I mean, he's not out of it yet. Zarnax is at three, so... Yeah, that's true. That could, uh... You can take three hits in the blink of an eye, you know? You take that first hit, and the other two will follow pretty quickly. Yeah, you're, um... Like your your eye frames and then the the knockback that you have no control over are like the same. So then you can kind of get stun locked a little bit and just take two, three, four hits pretty quick. We got uh, all four players on the last boss here with no boss. Yeah, a little, little, little disco action. Away. If you were if you were looking for the party, here it is. It certainly is something. Looks like Larry is first to finish on the bottom. Yeah. GG. Ruining the disco right there. Yeah, Armageddon time not very far behind at all there. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. Ooh. Darnex down to his last health. Oh, and I'm he not just the last hit. <laughs> that's that's. Uh, whew. I'm sure his heart was beating fast there. <laughs> yeah. 
We wound up with the eight second difference on the bottom. That's that's quite a close race. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure Random Effect will be able to finish this off. He's got plenty of health left. Yeah, after the game over earlier, then you're in pretty good shape health-wise. Yeah, there's a lot of times where, you know, entering a level, it's just, you, you know, you're entering one of the woods stages with two health, like, you might as well just take that game over, assuming you have continues left. Yeah, I mean, usually I find it's those, like, one of those where I'll, like, usually I'll take a hit or two, and then suddenly one run I'll take, like, eight hits and then it's coming out of the the woods that i i'm low on health and then it's usually somewhere to kind of make it back up but yeah if you're going into their low then you might be in some trouble yeah uh, random effect finishes it off as well gets the melvin hat oh and the, the girl is crying about it <laughs> yeah it's kind of uh kind of a, a fitting and crying over yeah. the Melvin hat. That placement is great, but I think that's gonna do it for us. We'll send it back to Hans Buttface in the studio. Thanks for hanging out, Link. Alright, later, BGT. And just like he did in the Adventures in the Magic Kingdom in Season 6, Angry Larry is mopping up his own group. He goes to 2-0. and defeating Armageddon time for the second season in a row. Zarnax 42 defeats Random Effect in the game he chose for this season. Armageddon time will play Zarnax 42 next week, with the winner joining Angry Larry, who had the lowest average time in Adventures in the Magic Kingdom for Season 6 in the bracket round. Moving on up to the upper deck... Unos XX 1 0 is taking on Dark Magician 1 1. 8 4, who is looking for a win to keep his chances alive to make the bracket round. Bust Thunder at 1 0 takes on Link 7s at 0 1. Link 7s has never been in a loser's bracket before. Last season was the only time he was not in the winner's bracket, so he needs to win this race to keep hope alive. Let's head on over to Thurwolf and Super Bear Nirm for the commentary. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another round of Splatterhouse One Paku Graffiti. I am Nirm, and I am joined by Thurwolf. Hey, Nirm, what's up? I am ready to stab some zombies. How about you? Uh, I like slashing them myself. You ever stab something with an axe? Uh, I actually had a fake plastic axe with my Halloween costume once. Uh, swung that around a little. What was your favorite Halloween costume growing up? Uh, basically Grim Reaper. Just kind of skulk around, looking all creepy. You never had, like, anything more complex than Grim Reaper? Because Grim Reaper is just like a sheet and, like, maybe like a plastic... Uh... There's like rumors that I was a pumpkin once when I was really little. I I like to think those were lies. Let's see. I think my favorite costume growing up, I was we had a just a box and then like some like blue construction paper and we make I was a giant dice or a die and like I my face was like the one and it was painted blue and there was just blue dots on the other side. So it's did you get a lot of compliments on that costume? Uh, I don't really remember. I was like nine. That was a long time ago. But I, I remember the costume, so it must have been good. Yeah, that's true. It does sound like a nice little costume. No, we, we didn't go all out for Halloween too much. It was all about, you know, just go out, get some candy. Costumes are kind of like the necessary tool to get candy. Yeah, I remember... Uh... One of the latest times I went trick or treating was me and my two friends, and uh, one of my friends had a Direct TV hat, so he went around as like a Direct TV salesman, and he just wore the hat. And then I had like a black sheet, and that was like a. Sheet. That's about the amount of effort we put into it. Well, if that that does sound like a nice costume. Did he actually try to get people to sign up to Direct TV? 
Uh, I don't really think so. I think it was, it was just the epitome of laziness is really what it was. And uh, was that like last Halloween that you guys did this? Absolutely. No, I was probably I don't know, 14 years ago now. 14 years ago. Yeah, time flies. Where does all the time go in here? Only probably time. fighting all these bosses. That That's where all the time goes. Now this game's pretty brutal. Like, some bosses have, like, the right amount of time, and then, like, other bosses are like, How long do you want to fight this boss? Yeah, let's... What's your favorite boss here? What are you looking forward to seeing? I love Stabby Fork Guy. You my know, I was thinking the exact same thing. My absolute favorite. It's nice and quick. It's crazy looking. It's real fast. I like it. It's got that little hint of randomness just to kind of keep you guessing, and it's not a long fight. The doll, on the other hand, that's a little too much for me. Well, doll could be really nice. It's probably one of the biggest sources of variance in the run. If you don't lock it down, as you see Link 7th in the bottom left here having trouble, it can take a significant amount of time, whereas somebody like Yunos in the top left locked it down in the corner. And, uh, yeah, it's real fast when you have to move. Yeah, those are the good fights when you're able to pin it and then just... Yeah, I'm done. Moving on. No, that's a really, like, this game in a nutshell. If you, uh, play it right and don't make any mistakes, it's really fast, but then the mistakes really snowball, so... Well, if, if everyone could just do that, we'd all be world record holders, but alas... We are not. You mean you're not world record holder? Uh, no, no, I, I don't speedrun. I don't know what this whole thing is about, really. I'm waiting for the randomized version of this game to come out. I see. But yeah, we're, ju we're just kind of, you know, playing through stage one, stage two, all those fun stages. Do you think we're going to see top or bottom route on the rat? I think Yunos is going to do top row. Seems like the kind of guy yeah. that has the bravado that he's going to be like, man, I'm too good for I'm lose my lose two seconds by going on the, on the bottom row. No, 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 I got to go top row because I'm Yunos. I, I'm pretty sure he's trying to world record every time he plays this game. Aren't we all? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we're trying to do. Yeah, and there he goes. Let's see how it goes for him. Oh, both of them. Are we going to have top, top route, bottom, bottom route? Well, we'll see when Link. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oof, Dark Magician getting nailed. And that's kind of why you don't do top route, if you think there's even the slightest chance of that happening. Just so costly. And annoying. Tell you what, though, Yunos made it look good. I'll give him that. Well, is there any game Yunos doesn't make look good when he plays it? Um, yeah. A Link to the Past? I'm sure that's one of many. Interestingly enough, Yunos did grab an early shotgun. That's not something I've seen too much. Yeah, he seems to like that. He has no problem with the room before, and it does speed the chainsaws up a little bit. And then you got good old Spider Lady. That's just a giant time sink. I've heard a lot of people struggling with this fight. Like, I don't really understand... Like, like it's just a time sink to me. I don't really see it as a difficult fight, but I guess some people really struggle. I think it's more the battle against apathy to where you're going to take like a hint at some point just because you get a little careless because it goes on so long. Apathy it's, is a killer. Yeah, it's pretty rare for me to go damage list. I've done it, but sometimes I'll just get some hits in there, whatever. Speaking of uh, damage list, we got Dark Magician going uh, pacifist right now. You know, in a game with a guy walking around with a cleaver smacking things, you don't think pacifist would really work out too well. But, you know, in this fight it kind of does. 
Dark Magician, friend to spiders everywhere. Now, when you find a spider in your house, Niram, what do you what do you do? It you gets just kind of be like destroyed. Oh. <laughs> destroyed. Yeah, I, I squash all bug. Yeah, I I do the same. I'm I'm not kind to the spiders unless it's more hassle than it's worth. Like far corner somewhere. I'm like yeah, fine. Yes, yeah, sometimes you know if it's a small spider, maybe not. Maybe I won't leave. I'll leave it alone. But for the most part, it's getting squashed. So Yunos is going to be the first one to the GOAT boss here. Buzz Thunder really not that far behind. Buzz Thunder leading the race on the bottom. We do have Buzz Thunder against Link underscore 7777. And the top, of course, Yunos double X and Star Condition 1184. Oh, that's who we're watching? I thought we were watching our races. I thought I was the top left. Have any one. projections on uh, how this is going to go? Um, looking pretty good for you, Nos. Um, really, this boss is about getting the stupid bats that you can kill right away, and then as long as you lock the goat like down in the corner where you can just hit him as soon as his iframes are up, it's really pretty cool. But uh, you can see Buzz Thunder having a little bit of trouble because he had like four or five bats left, whereas you know. You know, we'll have like one bat flying around, no big deal at all. And Link 7s looks like he has a lot of bats. Well, he's, he's whittling it down. It's when he transforms that you want to have a, as few bats as possible. Are we ever going to see anyone go into that transporter? I sure hope not. Who, who will be the person to do it? Will it be you? That can, sounds can like an Armageddon time. An Arma thing? Ah. You know, he, maybe he might not have that depth perception, you know, maybe uh, struggles to see where the screen transition Nah, I, I think Arma will oh, play it straight. He could prove me wrong, though. I, you know him a lot better than I do. I'm, I'm still kind of new to this whole elite business. Well... Alright, DM does not want the shotgun and waste the rest of his shot. And you know it's making short work of that first cabin there. Pretty easy to get through, but uh, if you get hit there, it can be pretty nasty. And oh, you know it's getting destroyed by that little spike. I am not a fan of the little spiky guys, to be honest. I want to kill them. The sharks, those those guys are cool. They can they can sit there and be there do their little sharky thing though. Are you a fan of burgers as health uh, refills in these games? It seems to be a common one. Candy too. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about it. Like, you're in, a, like, a horror movie. You'd think you'd have, like, skulls or... Maybe, like, the soul of the dead or something, you know? Yeah, just, like, hearts, the soul. like, beating hearts that are, like, bleeding and yeah. oozing out or something. But instead, this guy's, like, eating burgers and candy. What, what is that teaching our youth, Nirm? That, uh, burgers and candy are delicious. So, which uh, fast food chain sponsored this, or is it a... Well, fast food and candy could be owned by the same company these days. I'm trying to think, are there any like, fast food companies that like, give out candy with their meal? I, I guess Sonic I've does. Mints. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the little peppermints. Yep. Sonic is good. Mm, disagree. Uh, Fork Ninja. Are you, do you like the Fork Ninja name, or do you call him something else? I've never heard the Fork Ninja name, but, uh... I don't know. It's a little too spooky to be a ninja. What would you call him? Uh... Fork Ghost? Fork Ghost? Eh, Ghost seems a little tame. I mean, at Fork least go with Spirit or something. I like Fork Knife. <laughs> the fork knife, yeah. The, 
that sounds a little too close to Fortnite, I think. You can't can't use that. Probably copyrighted in some way. I like to think that the uh, boss of the section is uh, an homage to me because you know it's a wolf. I see. I see it. Famous. So those uh, great ghost dudes. I had a revelation today. Like the, the look on their face. It's like when you're in the bathroom, and uh, you're dropping the kids off at the pool, and the water splashes up and hits you. That's the look you get on your face. That is very specific. But I'm not wrong. I'm like that's exactly you're like oh. <laughs> oh man, you know, actually cutting it a little close there. That helmet coming in handy. I was almost going to think that was intentional, but he's... I figured he might take a death early on somewhere, but no, he's uh, getting help. Uh, and, uh, stage making... 6, like, throws 50 burgers in your face and candy. It's it's easy to refill. It is nice that they put the little bucket hat thing as kind of like a an armor upgrade, if you will. It's a nice touch. Dark Magician in the same scenario here. One point of health left. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing any uh, game overs. At least that's my guess. Based on no. this point that they've gotten this far. Oh, these, some of these rooms can get really nasty really fast. You get hit the wrong direction. You just you're just chained forever, and it's. I mean, who? Who would fall? Who would fall for such a thing? Oh, no one, I'm sure. No, no one in the elite, anyway. That's why we're elite, right? Sure. Never do that. Never. No. Buzz Thunder ahead of Link 7s by a fair amount here. Link 7s, about a half a stage. But anything can happen here. Now, does that actually look like a pumpkin to you? It kind of does when it's open. I can see like it's a pumpkin with the cutout eyes, but when it closes its mouth, that just looks messed up. I have never seen that as a pumpkin until you mentioned it. Yeah, I heard someone else mention it as a pumpkin. I'm like, oh, it kind of does when it's open, but once it closes, it's just kind of like some messed up gourd. Uh, the clock room. That's that's a fun room. It's it's not so bad if you take it nice and slow, and Ninos does no problem. A little low on health, but uh, looking pretty good for Yunos here. Yeah, he's he's marching right along. Just basically the screamer room. Yep, bad. Yeah. He's now it's just you know beat on a pumpkin a little bit. Not drinking the soda, you know, it's going for broke. Well, you you know he's always trying for the world record. Uh, probably not possible with the time given, but it's still set a good time. But if he does take a death here, he's gonna be in trouble. Nobody ever dies at Pumpkin King. No, who, who would die at Pumpkin King? No one. No, that would never happen. Buzz Thunder in the lead in the bottom race here. A little bit more of a health pull than you know. Dark Magician, on the other hand, doesn't drink the soda, much less health, but facing against you, Nos, you might have to just do that. Living life on the edge. But they're all gonna unite here at Pumpkin pretty soon. Let's see how Link handles the Screamers. Alright. Now it's all Pumpkin all the time. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is this? Uh, which one's the bad one? Uh, 1. Um, I'd give it maybe a three. It's all right. 
but it's nothing to write home about. I might just be entranced by the colors, though. I and definitely yourself? feel like this is one of the ones where it, it should end about in half of the amount of time that it actually does. Like, this, it's really just not interesting. I, I'm well, sorry. It's I, I, I'd give it a game. two. I'd give it a two. Slightly a little more than me. Nothing for the aesthetics, or is the two because of the aesthetics? A two is because it's like an acceptable amount of difficult. It's not like totally. F but at the same time, it's. I don't know. But Yunus is done. Congratulations. He will oh, be the victim. He did a thing. Now you just gotta wait for lost control, and there you go. He would be your winner. Very nice time. 1741. Oof. And uh, looking like Buzz Thunder finishing out on the bottom there. Gonna be the winner of your bottom. Just barely getting that sub 18. Very nice. And then Dark Magician's next. Still pretty good time. Low 18, it looks like. And Link 7's is just wrapping up. What do you think about the reveal that it was all a movie, Nirm? All a movie. Um, actually a very good way to sell what happens in this game, because there's a lot, of, a lot of tropes that are covered in this game, and for it to be a movie at the end is a pretty clever way to tie it up. Uh, sub-19 Melvin. But, there you go. Yeah, there's your hat. We had no continues in all four of these guys. Yeah, pr pretty solid runs from everybody, just... That's the matchups. And solid runs from Yunos Double X and Buzz Thunder. Dark Magician's time there is better than any time I've put up. And uh, Link 7's. We'll uh, have to try again next time. Oh, that'll do it nice for us. nice commentating. Yeah. Thank you, know, you One of these me. days, I'm going to like find you, Nir. Uh, I'm going to hunt you down. Oh, that's right. We're in the same city. I know. I always forget this. I'll bring my hockey mask. Oh, perfect, perfect. I'll be on the lookout for a dude in the hockey mask, which is probably not all that out of the ordinary. Uh, not here, anyway. All right, let's set it back up to the booth, to Han. All right, take it away, Hans. Moving on to the bracket round are your winners, Unos XX and Buzz Thunder. They will play next week, with the winner being awarded the number one seed. Dark Magician and Link 7s will unfortunately be in the relegation race, where they hope to win or survive to stay in the upper deck. And who will join them? Coach Crab and D-Pad Danny battle the 1 and O's. Winner will move on to the bracket round. Near and Bent Glass Tube battle of the 0 and 1s. The loser will be in the relegation race. This is Group Freddy and Random Effect and Just a Man 114 are your commentators. But first, let's send it on down to our sideline reporter, Little Crab Cakes. Thank you, Hans. I spoke with some of the racers tonight and, oh wait, yes, yes. I've just got a word that there's some activity going on backstage. We're going to have to take the cameras down to the dressing room. So I was told that there's a few races tonight. And as I checked the schedule to see who my next victim is, I couldn't help but smile. You know, D-Pad Danny and I go way back. We have a history outside Elite, a history that goes beyond 8 bits and rage quits, a history that goes beyond PBs and dirty deeds. 
but with all the marbles on the line, we know who will be crowned the Pumpkin King. Deephead Diddy, I'm gonna run circles around you, brother, so much that your head's gonna spin right off. What's the matter? Got butterflies in your stomach? Oh, yeah, you better be nervous. You're about to find out if you're built ram tough. Stick a fork in you, Danny. You're done. Get ready for the crab, because this coach doesn't pull a single jab. Coach Crab, you must think you're Mr. Big Shot, playing the games like you can't do any wrong. Well, I see you. I see you, Crab Man. And I'm coming for you. I see the fear in your eyes. You might have everyone else fooled, but I can see through that facade. You're afraid. You're thinking, oh, I hope Deep Head Danny goes easy on me. <laughs> no. You just wait until I get you in the elite ring. I'm going to make you realize all your deepest, darkest fears. And when I'm done with you, you'll be begging for mercy. Believe me when I say, D-pad will make you be sad. All right, welcome uh, to, I believe this is the upper deck. Uh, we have two matches to show you. Coach Crab 27, uh, or 127, excuse me, uh, and D-pad Danny versus uh, near, against, not against, what am I talking about? Near and Venko has two at the man. bottom. Yeah, I got Justin Man with me. Let's go. <laughs> What's up, random? Uh, not too much. Uh, an interesting start, actually, already. Did you catch that? That uh, Coach Crab actually did the uh, the new trick of uh, did. resetting and continuing immediately, as the other three racers didn't do that. That's very interesting. I, I like the trick. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many people want to deal with doing that in a race, just because it's a lot of, like finagling it's a, with your console it's a lot of like money. yeah <laughs> but it you know saves a couple seconds two and a half seconds or so done optimally so yeah and we got coach crab already out to a little bit of a lead because of it takes a bop though so that lead is just negated come on co who takes a bop there all right we'll see what happens they're they're all arriving about the same time so what do you like to do during this uh, interlude that you got going on? I see, you know, some people are just kind of standing there stabbing. Looks like uh, D-Pad Danny's going nuts. Yeah, I mean, I feel like usually I'm just going to, yeah, jump around and, like, dance with the music or stab with the music or something. But sometimes it's a good, it's a good like, breather moment where you can just put the controller down for, like, 30 seconds. And... Yeah, you really need that breather moment a minute into the game. <laughs> well, if you just came from another run, maybe you want. Maybe. You know, after that whole boring boss fight, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I feel like a lot of the bosses in this game are are a little bit on the boring side. There's a few that you know create some challenges, but stuff like this where it's timer based, you just kind of have to run around and not get fought. Yeah, there's a it few that are like this. The spiders, I think, fall probably mm -hmm. in that same category. A few of the bosses are actually pretty fun, or. Maybe is that fun, fun, the wrong fun word. in quotations. Yeah, <laughs> tricky. There's a few that you really like. The beginning of the fight really relies on how well the rest of the fight's gonna go. Uh, yeah. Next boss we'll see is is pretty much falls under that category. So. Yeah, we got all runners uh, within maybe just a second of each other. I think the pulling up the rear is D Pad Danny. Uh, it seems, but really not by much. A second, maybe half a. second and into the uh, literacy portion. Yeah, I don't know how much time you can actually lose in here, but I think you can, like, if you're slow on killing books, uh, you have to, like, if you let one fly around the room and just leave the screen, you still have to kill, like, another one. So, yeah, I wasn't sure if this is timer-based or if it's enemy-based. I think it's, yeah, I think it's a certain amount. I, I haven't counted. Maybe ten books or ten sets of books, I mean. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, I put it in terms with the chainsaws. That's kind of how I dealt yeah. with it. This boss, though, my god, I this is the boss that when I played this casually, I just got wrecked over and over again. Yeah, let's see who can get the initial hit. Nirm got it. D pad Danny got it. And yeah. nice, nice stun for D pad. Look at him go. Oh, wow, yeah, D pad basically with the perfect fight there. That's Coach ridiculous. not too far behind. BGT having a little trouble. Nirm also didn't have too much trouble, it looked like. BGT is actually in some trouble here with his health. He's gonna 
actually have to be careful in the next stage now, too. Yeah. I believe we'll see him go for the safety food that's in this first safe, box. Yeah, the, the oh. first uh, box there. He's going to skip it. Confident. Well, you can get it in the chicken, too. The that's chicken. true. You can just grab the one. Yeah. I like to save that one for after the fight, just in case. But That's true. But, you know, desperate times. Yeah, I think all the all the runners so far, we're in week two now, so everyone's kind of getting their runs a little more optimized, so you don't want to be giving up time, I guess. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think everybody's getting really, really solid at the game, understanding what they need to do, understanding the strats on each screen. Uh, you know, we're going to see, you know, low, we're going to see 18 minute times from a lot of these, a lot of these runners. Yeah, absolutely. And some of them we might even see 17. I wouldn't put it past. Some of these runners already have 17 minute PBs. Yeah, that's so ridiculous. We could see that in races. I believe All right, Coach we actually got... has a 17. Oh, nice. Not All right, we got four runners on the screen. What's the over under on uh, on doing the over and under <laughs> strats for the. Uh, oh, man. Here? What a good pun. Uh, <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just go two and a half. Two and a half. Do not. He's thinking somebody's gonna get knocked and then go back. Well, no, or somebody's you gotta gonna set miss. the over under with a half. You can't, okay, like, you, can't, you can't set it with a. We got two unders though so far here. All right, there we go. All right. Well, if you took the over, there it is. Then you get the under. I don't know how that would work. I I, I don't do like sports betting, so I, I don't even yeah. know what it means to do that. Clean kills on the top there. Um, once you learn, so when I first, I actually did, you know, most of us, I think, did the top strat because you didn't know you could do the bottom strat first. And uh, first time I tried the bottom strat, I had never actually watched anyone do it. I just heard that you could do it. So I, I like got to the end and I jumped and then pressed stab and I missed and got knocked all the way backwards. So, yeah, it seems like you have to do that. You have to go a little bit further than you would on the top route to make sure because the wind's going to blow you back and you need to have enough space to do it. That's actually the first time I've seen it, too, because I don't do that bottom strike. Yeah, what I what I do, it's actually pretty free, is you just um, press B first and then jump, and you're gotcha. already swinging when you go up, so like you can't miss. And all you want to make sure of is that the mouse is not about to jump when you do it, because then you will miss. <laughs> So you usually yeah. do it like when he's coming down. Yep, and it looks like we have two uh, runners going for the shotgun strat against the chainsaws, and two runners that didn't chose not to. Yeah, Nier actually think... had a really good shotgun fight with, I mean, a really good chainsaw fight without the shotgun. Mm -hmm. I don't think he missed a single one. Now we're into the uh, what I assume is the Ridley fight. <laughs> yeah, that's. That's probably somewhere on it. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess you can tie all these to movies, maybe even multiple movies if you get creative. But Well, yeah, we all know that Hollywood has churned out some sequels to, you know, <laughs> mediocre movies. Oh, reboots. Reboots everywhere. Now, this boss is usually not too tough, but you can get, like, into a bad rhythm, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. I've, I've had some of these go really smoothly, and then some just train wreck, and I get... You know, I take like four hits, and that's really bad going into the next stage because you don't get any really, you don't get any free health power ups and going into a, a tougher boss battle. Yeah, BGT down to his last hit here. He's going to need Oof. to be careful. He's almost done. We've got about eight more of these. We have. Oh no! Oh! That hurts. That hurts a lot. That was right at the end of the fight. I think there was. Yeah. Usually your your EXP is high twenties when that fight ends. So. Yeah. Near him now out win. to a commanding lead uh, against BGT as uh, Coach Crab still holding a few seconds uh, over D Pad Danny here, uh, going into the. Uh, what would you call this boss? What do you call this boss? Uh... I call him the Acid Goat because okay. he's clearly using some sort of drugs. But <laughs> there's several. I mean, who's the real boss? Is it the goat, or is it? I mean, originally the goat is that weird clan member dude there. So I don't really, <laughs> I don't really know. And then there's these weird bats too, or whatever they are, birds that fly. Yeah, I feel like they've taken some liberties here with the uh, with the uh, lore of this game. 
I think the bats are the most annoying part of the fight, by the way. The goat is yeah. not that big of a deal, but I, for a lot of times, I can't, like, jump high enough to hit them. You know what I mean? I don't know why. I just can't get into a rhythm where I can... Unless they're, like, swooping down for you or whatever. So I just try to do that center strat where you just kill them mm -hmm. as they spawn. Yeah, but all three runners there are getting really good uh, kills on the, the, the acid goat. Uh, <laughs> really, really solid. That's right. <laughs> I'll, I'll try I'll try to pick that up and coming into my least favorite boss just because I, I've tried the strats on this guy and I fail quite a bit of the time Oh, it's all about getting the shotgun. If you, if well, you no, yeah, the but, like, but you have to you have to shoot the shotgun at the top of your jump too. And if you miss it by even just like a few pixels, you'll miss him. Yeah, it's terrible. I just make sure to uh, like not do it until he starts moving forward, because like I, you can definitely jump early while he's still rising up, and it like misses for whatever reason. But yeah, you got to get a good rhythm on him too. Yeah, that's true. But it's I mean anything with the shotgun is better than not having it there. That is absolutely the place in the game that you need to have the shotgun for this run yeah uh, probably on to probably my favorite level of the game actually i like the uh sort of the atmosphere and the colors and the music of it i really like it yes yeah, this, this is a cool level i also uh i think this is my favorite boss of the game just aesthetically and the sounds he makes <laughs> when you hit him are pretty cool yeah, uh, D-Pet Danny having a bit of a struggle with the uh, the little spikes outside, while Coach Crab is having trouble with the spikes inside. Uh, kind of an offset. I thought maybe uh, Coach Crab was going to take a, a bit of a more of a commanding lead there, but kind of evened out, except for the health. Yeah, and this part that Danny's just went through there, that part's tough. Yeah. To do fast. All those those spiky enemies, the pricks. Uh, are no fun. They Their hitbox seems like it's way wider than they are, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I think it, I think it is a, a lot bigger than what it looks like. Alright, uh, Fork Ninja. Love this is like guy. the, it's like, yeah, but it's like the weirdest boss in the game. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, what, what yeah, I don't really is know this what boss? <laughs> like, all, everybody else I can understand. Uh, I don't get it. This is like this is like lightning, and he's got a fork. Maybe he's doing a science experiment. I don't really know. Uh, Coach Crab getting unlucky on some cycles. He missed. He missed a few, um, yeah, and definitely we allowed D Pad Danny to now, catch yeah. him. Yeah. That's uh three seconds, maybe two or three seconds. So it'd be a heck of a finish here. A lot of platforming still to happen in the rest of this run. Uh, this segment here, this forest segment, is uh, one of the tougher, I think. It's tougher, but when you when you get all of like the damage boots that you need, it's really satisfying to, to yeah. get it all done. Yeah, you want to make sure you come in there with some health to burn, too, uh -huh. so you can do all that. Uh, and then the second forest segment, I think, is actually even worse, for sure. No, I agree. Later. Yeah, you gotta take more damage boosts in the uh, second part than the first. If you want to do it fast. Coach and Danny both getting through the that ghoul room or whatever they are. <laughs> uh, without taking damage. Nicely done. Let's see some of these damage boosts that uh, Coach is not giving two bits about. He's just going... Near him down to one health here. Ouch. This is not a place you want to have one health. Yeah. Taking it a little easy. Oh. oh. That's, uh... It's gonna, it's gonna help a little BB. chance. Yeah. I mean, he's still behind by quite a bit, but that gives, you know, a good 20 seconds now. We got the, uh, the werewolf over here. Side-by-side -side fights. This guy, you can get real good timing, kind of like Coach did there on that last hit. You want to try to just hit him as soon as he, like, gets rid of the shield before he jumps. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll jump backwards, so good job. Interesting that coach. 
both of our runners did chose not to do the uh, helmet. As we see Niram taking on the helmet, he wants that extra defense. Love I think that that's like helmet. a super cute part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the only fun. place you can do it too. It's yeah. just, like unique. It's kind of weird. I figured it out on accident one time, like when I was playing it casually. I didn't realize that that's what it did. <laughs> like, I, it was really strange. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know until someone told me in the Discord. Good fight, and BGT heading through the ghoul room himself. He's only got half his health moving into the second stage here, uh, BGT does. He's got to be a little careful with these damage boosts. Misses uh, Candy for some health. Yeah, it's hard to force yourself to go back for the candies, because then you're like going, you're just like, which ones should I go back for? Which ones should I leave? Yeah, I probably wouldn't turn around for any candies, but... Yeah. You definitely try not to m miss them as you go by. But he does make it through. See if he takes the helmet as well. Ooh, I think he wanted it. Yeah. I think he did too, but he jumped a little it. too far. So he's going to have to be careful here. He can only take four hits until death. I think he was trying to probably let the bucket hit him on the... on the right side of his butt, or... What am I trying to say here? If the bucket hits you, like, before you get past halfway, like, past it or whatever, it'll knock you backwards in the spikes, so... Might have been trying He's to down to one that. health! Oh, oh, no! BGT Rip. taking another death. That is no bueno. Meanwhile, D-Pad takes care of those chainsaws. He's about two rooms back of Coach yeah. now. That's a healthy lead. Oh, but Coach! Oh, no! Wow, we're gonna have almost a sink again here. Yeah, they, they are. I think D pad is in the lead just barely now, right? No, I guess not. I forgot he was one room behind. Oh, he, did he fall? Did I think he fell at the end there. He was in oh, the lead. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I actually looked away for a second, but yeah, he was slightly ahead. All right, well, we're gave it right back, back to where we were. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he's got enough health. He's not. He's not going to take any power ups from the soda machine. There wouldn't be any need to. Yeah, it's really going to come down to execution on the final boss. Coach gets through that final ghoul room. That that's a tough room too to get through mm -hmm. without taking damage or knockbacks. And he does it no problem. And here we go. Uh, worst final boss in probably the NES library history, <laughs> as far as I know. Danny also getting through there clean. Nice. I say NES library, this is a Famicom game. Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Like, I think it's a cool concept, except for it's just, you, you do the same thing like 15 times. And that's it. It's yeah. like, I can understand if it was like 10 or whatever, or. If I was half the length, it'd probably be about perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know why it's like, is it 15 or 16? I don't know. Like, why is it that long? I don't understand. It's, a, it's just a battle of perseverance, I guess, really. I mean, I've totally died to this boss. So I have to. I'm not going to say it's like super easy or anything, but certainly if they have this much health, they definitely none, none of the three that are in there right now should be taking any deaths. Nearm mm -hmm. actually did grab the soda. He might have been watching where BGT was, knowing he could afford it. That's a good point. Don't want to take, you know, if you take a late death here, that's huge. Do you start over at this no, or yeah, do you, you start, start over at the over. house? Well, you start over in here, but I mean, it's such okay. a long fight. That's true. You would just, you know, I mean, BGT might be in there before he finishes this fight. That's a good point. But this one up top is going to be real close. I mean, Danny did have uh, quite the deficit entering, so I don't expect yeah. unless uh, Coach I don't, really misses a bunch of hits. But I don't already, think he has, right? Yeah, no, he's been pretty clean. Most of them are pretty easy to get. Uh, you know, as soon as he appears, sometimes you might miss once, and then you just have to kind of reset and jump again. Cost you a second or two, but... Yeah, BGT just cleaning up the final few platforming rooms here. Grab the candy from the deer head. Gotta be getting down here to see... There it is! Coach Crab... Getting a nice, just over 18 minutes here. That's really solid for a race time, I think. Absolutely, yeah.
Not too many major mistakes. 1809. Nice. Well, definitely a, a great time. Uh, That's gotta be it's gonna be disheartening for Danny. You know, he made a few mistakes here and there. He knows he probably could have cleaned up, and then he has to, you know, have this 17 second end or whatever to look over and see that coach just dot done in front of him. But yeah, 1825 for D-pad Danny, a really solid run as well. Yeah, also a really good race time. Nothing to be ashamed of there. And it'll certainly help towards his average, which could come into play in these groups. Yeah. Depending on final standings, so. Niram finishing up. Yep, and I think he will also be under 19, just barely, it looks like. And yeah, you're right. This, if he would have died right at the end, uh, BGT is in the uh, Pumpkin King fight. Yep. The Pumpkin King? Can I call him that? That's what I call him. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if I was uh, infringing on any Disney copyrights. <laughs> yeah, BGT just taking care of business here, getting ready to grab that Melvin hat. <laughs> I know that hat too well. <laughs> One thing I, I actually wonder, I don't, I don't know. There, you know, the pumpkin spawns are actually the same, like every time. I don't know. If they are. Know, but like, yeah. Well, so I did like, not know that. I haven't actually, like, I know some of them, like, I know which one, which times he's going to spawn. I, like, count the hits as I'm going, so I know which ones he's going to spawn in the middle. I haven't memorized all of them yet, but, like, it seemed like BGT might have known some of them, because he was, like, hanging out off to the side, getting ready for a hit. Didn't look like he was ready for that Interesting. one. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's actually something new for me. I, I was kind of just in the mode of get to the center, because it would be easier to hit him. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I usually stay in the center anyway, but I know, I know, like, the first two are always in the center. Um, the eighth one is in the center. There's a few other. The twelfth one is in the center. I think there's like two others that are always in the center. And then yeah, they're all they're all static. It'd be nice to memorize them to be honest, because then you can maybe get even like save, you know, frames or so uh -huh. per per hit just because you're anticipating it. Yeah, if you could save quarter of a second on each one, that's saving like yeah, it adds up I don't know, four <laughs> seconds. It's huge. I mean, even though this is what we were saying the. It's a boring long boss fight. I really feel like you can actually lose serious time here. So, but BGT gets it done. Yeah, he's gonna get the sub twenty-one. Unfortunately, he did have, I think, just was it just the one death? Uh, two. It was the two. Okay, yeah. So a little bit of a rough run for him. Finishes it out. Grab the Melvin hat and the crying, <laughs> the crying <laughs> girl next to it. Just oh, love makes it. It all makes it all worthwhile. We, we should just get a freeze frame on that. <laughs> I like how the perfect kind of just hides it too. Can't yeah. really tell what they're doing back there. Is yeah. it a hug or a kiss? I'm not sure. It could be more than that. You never know. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, what a what a great race. Uh, really, the top race was was really close all the way through, back and forth. Uh, unfortunately, BGT took a few deaths, but Niram really had a solid run. Uh, Justin, maybe you want to take us out of here. Yeah, I mean, pretty much everything Random said, great race. And uh, I think, yeah, we'll send it back up to Hans. Thanks, everyone. And there you go. Coach Crab moving on to 2-0 will be in the winner's bracket. Bent Glass 2, 0-2 will be in the relegation race. Next week, D-Pad Danny plays Nirm. The winner joins Coach Crab in the brackets. The loser joins Bent Glass Tube, Link Sevens, and Dark Magician in the four-way relegation race. And here's a full look at the schedule for next week. Armageddon in Time versus Zarnax is going to be for the bracket spot. And so is Nirm versus D-Pad Danny. Here's a list of the Melvins that helped out with production this week. And if you're enjoying the tournament and you want some more, you can head on over to elite.angrylarrygaming.com to take a look at the archives for the videos of the past seasons. And while you're there, why don't you put your name down on the wait list if you think you're elite enough. The bracket rounds are just around the corner. Next week is our last week of the group stage. I am Hans Buttface. Make sure you tune in Friday night for the special cesspool show. And then again on Sunday night for Elite Season 7, week number 3.
Have a good one. You might think you've won, coach, but I'll be back. And next time I'm going to unload a whole world of hurt on you. I'm Deep Head Danny, and I will see you next time. Nob.